So the Cybex S Suite software is actually a really powerful piece of kit, which actually a lot of people are not even using to its full potential. So this video is just to show some cool stuff that is useful for calibrators that over the years I've picked up and is useful to share that I think will be a massive help to certain people. And I bet a lot of you will go, oh, didn't know you could do that. So let's go over some of these aspects. So the worksheet, I don't ever really see people using worksheets, but your worksheets can be really, really useful. So I'm just going to go and create a new worksheet here. So I just went to worksheet new. And, uh, and then what I'm going to do is go to worksheet, then add. And now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to select a frequency output and I'm also going to go to the base fuel map so here we've got two calibrations or two maps open should I say uh, which you can basically view both real time and you can set up these worksheets to however you want and then you can just do a worksheet save and it will save it for next time so I'm showing you this because there's actually a feature that I think is really good that a lot of people that have used older ECUs, I remember from the Power FC days uh, and stuff like that, that people used to love the trail feature to see where exactly where they've been on the calibration. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to show how that actually works. So on our ECUs, we do have that option. So under um, options and then trail live position, you can basically enable it to be either on a 2D or 3D map. And you can actually then set on here the, the length of the trail point. So we're going to set it to a maximum uh, amount. And when I actually just, I'm, I'm actually on a test rig here, so I'm just going to move my kind of RPM. I've just connected up a, an output, to, um, a fuel output into an input to replicate the crank. You can actually see here that on the screen, as I'm changing it, your the trailing RPM point is changing. Now, the, the point of the, I'm actually at the maximum bar amount here. And some people like to have it really long. So here's a cool thing you can do. So if you open up the registry, and while you're in the regedit, you're actually in this software, it should open up the Cybex SCAL folder. And you'll see in here, you've got trailing live points. Um, and what you can do in here, just set this to 50. And that then basically makes the maximum trailing live point really long. Uh, and now if you watch, you can kind of remember the old days of the Power of C, et cetera. And some people like this. They like to see where they've actually exactly been on the uh, the map they're using. You can actually see now you've got a long, a real long tra a trail so that if you're doing a dyno pull, et cetera, you can actually see exactly where you've been. Okay, let's look at something else that I not, don't see many people use that is actually really useful is the cow go to function. In here, you can basically search for any of the calibrations that you want. So let's say calibration switch, you want to change something on there. You can actually open up all the dedicated maps that are linked to the calibration switch. Or if you wanted to say type in flex fuel, you can then open up all the options of all the flex fuel maps. It's a really useful feature. I don't see many people use it very often. Uh, and it, again, it's, uh, it's something to uphold. Okay, let's go to another one. Really useful one. A lot of people are like, oh my God, I can't believe you can do that. So let's say you paste cow load. We're just going to grab another calibration here. And we can see all the differences in the pin assignments that are yellow. So people know that you can just go to paste cow and import and it imports that map. But not many people know about the import pin function. So let's say you want to import a, a, a pin assignment from another calibration that you've got. So you can see this one is different. If you press P, P, it will just import that one pin. So you don't have to import the whole of the pin assignments because if you do P, I, it basically imports all of the ones from that other map, which is uh, sometimes not what you want. So the PP is a really useful uh, feature. Also, not sure if many people know, there is an undo function. It's so useful. Many other ECUs I've used over the years, it's a nightmare. You change something. So let's say I multiply this by 1.3. Oh, God, made a mistake. Just press the U button on the keyboard, and it goes back instantly to where you were. Another one, S view. Many people don't know that you can actually select multiple, map, uh, multiple logs. So let's say you've got one log here. You can actually press the Shift button, hold it down, and open up a selection of logs at the same time. You can preserve the time gap if you want. Most of the time, just say no. And then you can see all of the, the data from all of those logs. And you can see the, the break lines here to, to show where they are. 
again, what you can also do is overlay stuff. So if I open up SVU again, let's grab a one single log. And then we go file, load another. Let's grab another log here. And you'll see now that you've got on the right hand side, two sets of data. So what we're gonna do is find a point to compare off. I don't know if these two match each other, but probably not, but either way. Now, if you want to overlay and get the RPM lining up to match, press hold down the shift button on the keyboard, and then you can drag the other map, the other log, sorry, behind. Make sure you clicked on the, the items of the right-hand side over here. And then once you've done that, you can drag it along and then you can compare. So here, these two look fairly similar. So once you've lined them up, you can then uh, yeah drag them closer. Let's move them over. I click at that point there now. And then if I zoom in, you can see you could overlay data. And then you could, if you want to look at the difference in the manifold pressure at that given point, you can then put the manifold pressure on both the logs to see, et cetera, what's exactly going on. Uh, and again, if you don't want to view all of these items on the right-hand side, you just want to view the items that are, are highlighted, press the O and the key style toggle, and that just highlights the ones that you've actually got selected to make it nice and easy to actually monitor the data. Okay, so let's go back to the SCAL software now. And another one I, I rarely people see people using is the big gauges, the big trace gauges that are really useful for when you're setting up PID, et cetera, and all other bits like that. So if we just grab an RPM here, stick it in a trace, and then right click on it and go make resizable, you can then drag this graph here and then you can add extra items into it. So let's say if you want to add your manifold pressure, you can add as many items as you want. Let's go air charge temperature and then you can change the colors of them. So you can go to change color for the manifold pressure. Let's get pink and then for the ACT, change that to green. Once you've done that, you can then actually have them set on the screen and also use the space bar button to pause it so that you can actually go back over and analyze the uh, data in real time. Uh, and it's a really useful function.